This patient is experiencing an acute myocardial infarction due to a ruptured plaque creating thrombosis of the proximal segment of the left anterior descending artery. Our current approach for patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction is immediate cardiac catheterization and percutaneous intervention. Balloon dilatation is first performed. Dissolution of the thrombus results in distal microembolization. Occlusion of the distal microvascular circulation increases myocardial injury, which may be reflected in further increased myocardial enzyme levels and additional myocardial damage. Following balloon dilatation, a long atherothrombotic lesion remains. Stent placement compresses the residual clot under the stent struts and causes a cheese greater effect. This results in an additional thrombotic embolization. Due to the apparent long length of the lesion, a second stent is placed. Placement of this stent also causes some distal embolization. Although the angiographic result is quite acceptable, a significant amount of residual thrombus persists, both at the stent edges and adherent to its struts. The poor distal microcirculatory flow, as assessed angiographically by myocardial blush, strongly correlates with a poor clinical outcome. Patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction may benefit from thrombectomy at the site of occlusion before balloon dilatation and stent implantation, thereby preventing embolization and distal myocardial injury. The same patient could be treated with angiogenic thrombectomy prior to stenting. The angiogenic catheter is shown here removing the bulk of the thrombus. A second pass removes more thrombus. The angiogenic catheter is passed several times until the operator is comfortable that all angiographically apparent thrombus has been removed. This reveals a short, moderately stenotic plaque, which is treated with a single stent without the need for predilatation. There is minimal, if any, residual thrombus present at the stent site. Angiography following thrombectomy and stenting shows an excellent result. In summary, percutaneous intervention in the setting of acute myocardial infarction due to coronary thrombosis is frequently associated with distal embolization and additional myocardial injury. Angiojet thrombectomy reduces the overall thrombotic burden, reduces distal embolization and its associated myocardial injury. In patients undergoing placement of a drug looting stent, treatment of coronary thrombus plays a particularly important role. Although proven effective in reducing restenosis, the safety and effectiveness of drug limiting stents has not been established in patients in whom there is unresolved thrombus at the treatment site. Thrombus compressed under the stent struts may prevent optimal apposition and contact between the stent struts and the vessel wall. In this situation, the true vessel size may be severely underestimated and incomplete strut apposition may occur. Successful removal of thrombus using angiojet thrombectomy may permit more appropriate stent selection, ensuring complete stent apposition and contact between the stent struts and the vessel wall.